Sports, about sports. Howdy, Ags from the tailgate, home of Aggie football. This is Coach and the Delivery Man. What's up, Corey? What's up, buddy? Hey, uh, today's episode brought to you by Frida Homes, building <laughs> our dreams, custom home builders, and uh, with over 15 years of experience in the Brads Valley, if you're looking for someone that cares about you and the details you care about contact frida homes visit them on instagram at frida.homes or give them just in a call 979-940-4466 when you call just remember everyone loves their frida homes wow 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 come on come on i know man i like how it. excited are you right now oh dude i was ready for the next game the next day I just, I don't want to lose any momentum. Amen to that, man. That offense, baby. That offense. Whoa. Man, yeah. it is flying past my eyes right now. It's just amazing uh, what one season will do. Pretty impressive. All right. Aggies win. Let's let everybody know. Aggies win over the Lobos, 52 to 10 at Kyle Field. It was 35, 35 to 7 at half. Backups played the fourth. Uh, or just first impressions, man. Offense looks a lot better. Petrino doing a good job. Jimbo's evidently doing what he says he's going to do. Leave him alone. Uh, offensive line looked a lot better. Um, a lot of changes in there. A lot of things I didn't expect in the offensive line. I'm sure we'll get into that later. Uh Running game wasn't what I expected, but we didn't we didn't need it. Uh, Connor got time to throw the ball when he did. Threw the ball deep, threw the ball well. Um, and I thought the defense. Everybody, I've heard some bad things about the defense. I thought they looked all right. I'm not worried about the defense. Yeah, I look, man, just a completely, <laughs> completely new feel to the offense. Right, the pace of the offense was just smoother. There was never, you know, there was never a, a situation where you you were sitting there clicking, you know, five, four, and wondering whether this ball was going to get off. You know, the play, you know, the guys were lined up early. I, I mean, just all of the little things that last year bothered you so much about Jimbo and the way he was calling plays, like all gone, all gone. Right. Right. Um, you know. With this offense, it's just – it's impressive how 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 just the one coach, the difference that that one coach makes because of the fact that, you know, the way he's teaching the read, the way he's teaching the pre-play checks, right? You go watch Connor Saturday night. That dude was a dude that by the time he got the ball, he knew exactly where he was going with it. He was confident. And he executed the playbook to perfection because of it, dude. Just, uh, I'm just impressed and very, very impressed at just the look of the offense. Um, that's my first impression. Before we get to all the comments, specific comments in the game, one comment on YouTube, greatest ever, predicted a 53-3 with vanilla defense, hope, Open up offense to show off. Pretty pretty close. Good job. Hey, I, I was pretty close. I believe your prediction was even closer. I do think you said we allowed yeah. 10 points and uh score. I think 50, I said 53. I said 52 to 7. That's what I felt confident saying. Yeah. 52 to 10. Close enough. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. All right, Corey, so let's start with this offense, man. Let's start with this right. offense. And, look, we're, we're going to get into it position by position. Who's your MVP for this offense right now? I mean, I got to say the offensive line. Just honestly, that's what would be my pick. Uh, Basantis at right tackle, I was worried about it. Sitting to do a fine job. Uh, you know, Dewberry didn't start but came in quite a bit. Uh, what's it, Nabu? Nabu? I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but he uh, 
offensive line. I was really impressed. I was worried about it. That's my biggest stress going into this game. I wasn't worried about the skill positions because I know we have. Uh, I know how good Connor is, but if they don't have time. It's going to be a long season, but I feel a lot better. We'll find out more next week. I'm <laughs> Look, I'm going to agree with you. The offensive line, great, great choice on that. I'm going to go Bobby yeah. Petrino, buddy. <laughs> I mean, you go. I'm not going to overthink this deal, right? I mean, the fact yeah. of the matter is that the 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 biggest difference here was a uh, a situation in which this offense knew how to attack a defense that was trying to take away the run, that had a lot of men in the box, that kept you know that didn't have safeties deep over the middle, and and Bobby said, "All right, well, if that's the case, we're gonna we're gonna air this sucker out, buddy, and good luck to you." Um, and 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 the players went out and did it, right? Uh, right. Thomas, Stewart, Walker. It didn't matter, right? It didn't matter which one of those receivers it was. That I mean, they they were they were get they were beating the, the other side like a drum, man. And uh, and the reason being is that that was the defense that that was that they were playing, right? They were playing a defense in order that that was going to prevent the running game. That was going to keep a lot of men in the box. That's going to take away the quick, short passing game because that's what this team did before, right? And it didn't matter. Right. My MVP, Bobby. There you go. Uh, I'm a surprise performer there for that offense. Man, I didn't know Noah Thomas was going to show up like that. I mean, everything he caught was a big catch. I'm talking, I'm not talking. Right. I mean, it was huge. Yeah, uh, he called out better than I expected. Him and Walker, I wouldn't expect. I didn't. Walker showed up. I was like, "Who is that again?" And he, uh, pretty impressive. I'm gonna go with a guy that I haven't given a ton of credit to over the years, and that's Foster. Uh, you know, he just been coming back from an injury, right, and everything else. He hadn't been fully practiced, but he gets in there. He starts the game, plays the great majority of the game at center. You know, I thought Foster played really well. Maybe one of the best games he's played since he's been an Aggie. Um, yeah. Not only was he in the lineup, which was a surprise to me, but he also he also played pretty well. And and yeah. that was that was a surprise to me also. So I'm gonna go with Foster's performance and right along the lines of your old line pick on the on on the MVP deal. Um, you know he's he's right up there in that conversation, right? A guy that's a, a guy that's uh, hopefully solidifying that's the middle of that <laughs> offensive line. A couple of things, um, you know, we talked about it the other day. Fathery played, didn't start. Basanta started, so is he our starter from here on out? That's a question that I have. I don't know. You know, that's a good. Question. I didn't expect to see. I didn't expect to see Fathery at all playing the game, much less come off the bench. Yeah, it's, it's interesting the fact that they did bring him off the bench in the fourth quarter and they played him over at left tackle. Um, and Basanta sort of started the game. And, and you're right. I mean, does that mean that Father is just still recovering from injury and and, and maybe there, there's not really any danger of a setback, but but they don't want him to get that many snaps right now, so whatever. Or is it the fact that Chase Basanta just overtook him at right tackle, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a hell of a backup. If you have if you have fathery a backup, imagine that that's pretty badass. Yeah. I mean, that's that that's impressive to me. But you're right. That's a great point. Um and Corey, how about how about the freshman performer for this offense? I think that's pretty it's pretty obvious, but who are you talking about? Basantis? Yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. I mean, I don't I mean Owens didn't show out, didn't do a whole lot. Uh, he looked timid to me. Owens did, but that's I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little while. Yeah, I think it's Bisonis. I mean, he, he absolutely took care of business um, as the starter, right tackle for this offense, and uh, and uh, you know did a pretty darn good job. So let's go position by position here, Corey. Let's let's start off where everybody wants to start off. Let's start off talking about quarterback. People love to talk about the quarterback. Look, Connor throws for 236 yards, five touchdowns, 18 to 23. You know, they, they, <laughs> I, I'm laughing at myself because uh, on Saturday, as, as anybody talked about Notre Dame and Sam Hartman, they talked about the fact that 
in the previous game, week one, you know, he he threw just as many touchdowns as he did have incompletions. And what an amazing stat this was. And and uh, and I was laughing at it, but I'm about to use that same stat for Connor, right? As many touchdowns as he had in completions, 18 to 23, five touchdowns. Pretty impressive. Yeah. A couple of those incompletions, Corey, were drops, by the way. Um, you know, one of them could have been another touchdown, but Jade Walker, you know, and he, he if he'd have thrown him out a little bit more, it made it easier, but still. Uh, so thoughts on the quarterback? I thought he played well. Like I said before, I, that's what I expect Connor to do. I expect to, I expect that stat line a lot this season, you know. And if he lets me down, I'll be very disappointed, you know. Is I expect more touchdowns than incompletions, so he better get on the ball. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, to me, what it, what impresses me, dude, is his his decision making and poise, right? Yeah. I I'll tell you what, man. His because you know you, you go look at his his throws. It's not like you're looking at this just incredible arm strength or or something like that. Hell, a lot of those throws are all touch, right? And and so like physically, he wasn't like he's not incredibly imposing or anything else, but his poise and his preparation, right? Because the one thing you could tell about him, even when the defense had a free runner coming, where they would yeah. send seven with only six blockers. The dude was cool, calm, collected, already knew where he was going with the football, took a little step back, and then just delivered a dime. I mean, that's what impressed me the most. Just just unbelievable. I was reading on Facebook or somewhere about uh, people, what they're saying about Connor, and some people said they he reminded them of Dan Marino. I was like, ooh. Break a little bit. They are like, oh, quick release, accurate. Dan Marino, I was like, oh, okay. Dan Marino is pretty badass. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't what think I'm ready for for Marino. I think somebody somebody said uh, somebody said Joe Burrow, and I'm like, ah, let's let's dial that back just a tad, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but look, he looked good. Man. He looked good, and his yeah, anticipation was incredible. I mean, there was what the was it the third down <sighs> long throw to Walker on the out. Uh, where once again, blitz coming, uh, blitz coming guy unblocked. And, you know, he, he starts throwing that thing before Walker's even made his break and just hits him perfectly in stride on the sideline, uh, for the first down. Yeah. He's awesome. Um, honestly, the only critique I have of Connor for Saturday is probably his zone read reads. Right where he's thinking about taking it from the running back. And there's a couple of times he should have pulled that sucker because the defensive end was crashing hard. And instead he gave it and the tailback gets run down from behind. You know what I mean? And yeah. that that's about as much critique as I have as far as the performance for Connor. And you know, when we look at it, we've been saying it all along. Like Connor's Connor's been the starter for this team for a while. Connor, you know, the fact that they didn't name it doesn't mean anything right he's been a starter and i think i think saturday i think saturday showed everybody else exactly that fact don't you think uh having some trouble there with the sound there Corey. i'm not hearing you buddy no i'm fine i'm muted i'm been sick got a little cold or something going on uh and Max came in and got some reps there in the fourth quarter. What do you think of Max's performance, Corey? Don't remember that much of it, to be honest with you. I had a little few too many white watermelon white claws. Uh, <laughs> I saw him play against a sick team. Well, I went back and watched it, and I'm going to tell you, you know, he he was decent, man. He was decent. Just you know, just from the get go, he's just not aggressive. He's not as decisive. You know, he, yeah. one of the first throws that he made, he just held the ball too long, got sacked, and whatever. Just. But he played well. He's not the same. He's not the same guy. Going to the running backs, man, you know, we didn't have a great, great running game the other day. But, you know, Daniels went seven for 51, also had a catch for five yards. Moss, six for 26 and a touchdown. Owen, seven for 25. What are your thoughts on the backs? Well, Daniels, I believe, outperformed the other two. Uh, Moss, I don't think he's far behind him. Owens looks like a freshman. Is what I, That's what I gathered. 
I mean, I was high on Owens all summer when I was reading about him or what the people were saying. I don't think he's going to surpass Daniels or Moss this season, is my opinion. Yeah. Look, I, to me, it was clear Daniels was the best running back in that backfield. I, yeah. I, I think his experience, his ability to see the hole, the way he, the way he sets up his blocks, just, I mean, just an impressive, impressive runner. Uh, you know, even that, that his one, his longest run of the day where it was a, a power, you know, they pull the backside guard and the tight end through the hole. And when that tight end comes through the hole, Max Wright, he, there's uh, the down block missed. And so there was like three guys in the hole sitting there and Daniel set it up inside and broke it back out to, to where the, the one block by Wright that my Max Wright cleared him up and got him those extra yards. So, you know, it's little things like that that are just so impressive to me. His vision, unbelievable. No questions asked. I think he's the best back in in, in this backfield at this yeah. moment. I agree. So the other thing we also found out is it's clear to us that for, for Jim for Bell and Petrino, Moss is the short down back, right? Right. Love the power formation on third and one or fourth and one, and and then in the in the at the goal line as well, bringing in an extra offensive lineman. They bring in Crown over uh, at fullback, you know the two tight ends, and they just they just get down in there and lead inside, and boom, it's a beautiful thing. Um. And then and Moss is the back in that in that setup. So he's gonna get touchdowns. Um I really enjoyed watching Crown over. I thought he was he was pretty good in that role. So I want to give him a little bit of props there. Overall, this running back group I'd say was okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. We'll learn like, like I said, we're gonna learn a lot more after this next game. Talent levels can go way up. I don't expect a 52 to 3 or 52 to 10 game, but it's, it should be close to that. Yeah, I think we learned a lot in Miami. I think Miami is a better team than than we expected even coming into the season after watching them week one. So you'll get a better right. feel for it. I will say the one thing that concerned me uh, from the running backs is that a lot of the pressure that, that Connor was in was caused by a running back, right? Like he got the running back got trucked or, you know, couldn't hold up. And, right. In, in coverage now some of those times i mean you match him up against a defensive end and that's your own fault right <laughs> you know no not many running backs are going to hold up in those scenarios but um but that was the one pressure the one place where they did have some issues um the wide receivers Corey, i, I I'll, I'll say this i don't think there's enough good words to say about this wide receiver crew. go ahead no i agree the only uh I was disappointed not to see Moose get more touches and Nias get more touches, but you can only give so many guys enough touches, right? I mean, what do you do? I mean, everybody's running open. Thomas is bigger and better than I thought he was going to be. I mean, I don't remember seeing that from Thomas last year at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you? I don't remember seeing him be – he looks stronger. His hands are huge. I can't imagine his hands grew over the summer, but he looks – his hands look huge. Uh, Walker looked good, but Thomas looked awesome. Yeah, I thought Thomas looked really good. He's he's got you know he he likes he's able to use his body as kind of a rebounder, like a big uh, a power forward to block out the defender and make a catch. Right. Yeah. The one thing I will say is a lot of those 50-50 balls which he caught, you know, he wasn't catching them up up top at the high point. Right, he's letting them come into his body. At some point, I think when he takes yeah, he'll play better. level. He'll be up. He'll be up playing high, okay. And and so that that's one of those things that that he could still do some work on. But you're absolutely correct. I mean, his physicality, right? Those, those DBs had no chance. Um, and and once again, going back to Petrino and what he's doing, you know, right? He's he's putting them in the slot to where he's matching them up against the safety, and it's an even worse matchup, right? Um, so. You know, over Stewart's over just again. so good, and God, Stewart's just so good. When he comes out there, I mean, his routes, he's quick. I mean, he's almost unguardable. 
Yeah, eight for one fifteen and two touchdowns on Stewart. By the way, that's pretty yeah. that's pretty darn good. And he does it yeah. kind of being quiet too, right? It's almost quiet. Yeah. And but you know when he, this was what what just absolutely blew me away with Stewart when he caught that one pass and then did that little move and then went and got another fifteen yards. But like, if he's one on one, it's over because that dude's yeah. gonna that dude is a better athlete than anybody else on the field, man. <laughs> and he will shake you. He will shake you. You are in trouble. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. If our offensive line can hold up for just a little bit, if people are trying to pull, bring too much, one-on-one, you can't – we got three or four receivers. You can't cover one-on-one. That, I mean, and, not, and to me, that's what's so impressive about it. And and Petrino knew it. Petrino knew it. He's like, all right, yeah. you guys are going to force us to throw it. That's fine. We'll do it. And we're going to show you that's not what you want to do. Right. right? Yeah. Um, the, I mean, if you just bring three or four men, if, if you bring three or four people, pressure-wise, our own line looks like they're going to block that this year. And if they block it, Connor, I don't care. If you give them enough time, those receivers are going to get open. With seven open. or eight guys back there. Yeah, they're going to get open. Yeah. So, I mean. And I'll tell block. you this. Even you, – you go look at it. And even even the few times that, that Moose got the ball, right, the touchdown. Like, yeah. breaks the tackle, boom, 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 you know, like – He's just better than others. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I asked a few times he gets the ball. I think he was three for 40. Nice yeah. deep crosser, man. Boom. Makes it look easy, right? Those guys, it's impressive. And then you added Walker to that mix. And, and it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Where are all these guys coming from? Where are all these guys coming from? It's, imp- I mean, it, it feels. You see any... Go ahead. I, I was going to say it feels like more. More ability, more firepower than a couple of years back when Alabama had like all four of those guys that ended up in the NFL, right? Like it didn't matter who it didn't matter who got the ball; they were all excellent. Hey, did you see any plays yesterday that were different than our normal play calling? Like, uh, you see any wide receiver rubs? You see any kind of screens? Because you rewatched yeah, the game. I mean, I didn't watch had, it. I was a little bit. We had, uh, one of those one of those deep deep ones to to move no to uh Evan Stewart was uh, a little bit of an out and go and go right a little double move kind of situation um yeah. you know where he just got and then he was just wide open uh so you, you know you didn't see a lot of that um but it's also it's also the decision making right it's very clear that that their their pre-snap read tells them hey look in the middle of the field no safety's deep you know, you're going to throw this post, right? And and it, it's all day. Or you're going to go deep, and it's all day. And so the the reads are different, right? The the pre the pre-snap reads are different. Um I can't say enough good things about this wide receiver group. I think that they're the best in the country. Best in the country. I'm not going to say that yet, but they're they're up there. As far as top 5. Oh, I'd say that. Yeah, I feel comfortable about that. Let's move to another receiving entity, the tight ends. All right. So, in my opinion, look, there's no numbers, no statistics for these tight ends. But I thought Wright played an exceptional game. Exception. Exceptional game. Uh, The blocking, and they've asked him to do a lot of blocking in the running game, a lot of blocking even in the passing game, keeping him in. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But I thought he was great. Your thoughts? Yeah, like you said, they didn't put up any stats. I saw Max out there blocking. Uh, I remember Jake being in. Looks a little – what's the word? Timid? I don't know what it is. He just – he's not – he's not an effort guy when it comes to blocking. Uh, probably being more like green and receiving, but not catch anything. If he went past him one, I don't remember. Yeah, he, he wasn't truly involved in the game plan, to be honest with you. It didn't seem like – but a lot of times they used him to stay in the blocking. And, you know, his – I don't know. It's not effort, but he he's not – he's not a he's not a strong blocker yet, right? He he still needs to get in there and figure out how that's done. Taking some lessons from Max Wright, all right? Now, he's plenty big, so he should be able to do it. They did target him on that one corner route to the end zone. Um and and he wasn't able to come up with the ball, uh, but that's the only time I think I remember that they targeted the tight ends at all. 
now it's time for Jake to step up. I mean, once Green gets back, I don't think he's any, any of these guys don't see a lot of playing time. Green gets back. Imagine we had Green in that game. Jesus. Oh, yeah, and scary. and I don't know. You know, part of it is just the the game. Like I said, it's part of the game plan because they kept yeah. him in the block, right? He wasn't even out in the for, in 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 the routes for a lot right. of right. So I don't know if it's because they don't have confidence in him or or what or if that was so if you had Green. It. So if you had Green out there, what are you doing? What are you? What are you? Are you keeping Green in the block? Is that what you're saying? Well, let's talk about that, right? Because we talked about scheme and the change in scheme. Well, one of the things that I noticed, for example, is remember last year and years before when you know Jimbo, everybody's like, "Well, why don't we go deep? Why don't we go deep?" And then Jimbo's answer is, "Well, you know, if they're bringing heat, we got to get rid of the ball quick. If we can't protect it, we got to get rid of the ball quick." Well. Instead of saying, well, we can't protect it, what Petrino did was bring in max protection. So max, the tailback, and you add another two guys to that offensive line, seven-man, sometimes eight-man protection with both tight ends uh, staying in and sending and sending uh, uh, just, you know, two guys in the route, right? I mean, and but they're going deep. So, you know, you protect it. By adding players to the protection when the defense is is showing you that they're going to bring too much, right? And it still gives you time to throw the ball deep. And that's a scheme thing, right? That has nothing to do with execution. So let's talk about that protection and that offensive line, Corey. What do you think? You talked about it earlier. Probably great. I mean, compared to what I saw last year, it's like a 180. I mean, you did a flip. Uh, the personnel, I was – I was surprised to see Basantis starting at right tackle if Father was healthy. I wasn't surprised that he played. I was surprised that if he's getting a nod over that. But if he is, it's awesome. If he beat him out, he beat him out. I was surprised seeing not as much of Dewberry as I thought we would. I didn't know there'd be like a rotation there. Yeah. Other than that, I agree Foster, with playing, Foster playing as much as he did. I was surprised Foster played as much as he did. I, I agree with you there. The whole Nabu, Nabu and Dewberry situation, it looks like they're basically alternating series, uh, you know, wanting to get them both in there. Um, and, and it, you know, they both played well. So I guess they both earned the opportunity to get on the field in these big moments. And, and you know, it'll, it'll, it'll show up more, I think, as the competition gets better. You'll be able to see um, the difference between the two guys a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, they started – other than that, I mean – Getting Basantis out at, at right tackle was the you know the the huge huge thing. I I re you know me I rewatched the tape. I went back, you know play by play. Protection was pretty solid all night. There was a few little mess ups. One where the defensive end crossed the face of Basantis and Basantis went with him, and they were bringing obviously a blitzer off of it. So he was he should have passed it to Robinson and then taken the blitzer. Um, you know little things like that, right? That that'll come come a little bit better to him as, as the season goes along, um, but aside from a few mis mishaps here, you know, a couple of guys, you know, falling falling off boxes. So the protection was really good, really yeah. really good. And the biggest issues with protection was usually with a, a tight end and a running back. We said that earlier. Now. We know that, that the protection was better. How about the running game? Because they struggled running the football. What do you think? I mean, you know, I think if Daniels would have got more than what seven or eight reps, I think he would have had a bigger game. I think you had they didn't give the running backs a, a chance to get a rhythm. I'll be I'll say that, but they didn't need it. They didn't need it. Uh, they did what they asked them to do. We still had we had over 100 yards rushing, didn't we? I don't know if we did or not. I'm not sure. Yeah, but we ran the ball pretty solid. I thought Daniels ran the ball well. A lot of it has to do with Owens. I was more excited about Owens and disappointed in what I saw out of him. Just because he didn't see the cutbacks. He didn't see the holes. He didn't look fluid. He looked like – He looked like he was like the, a first, freshman. the first time he'd been on the field is what he looked like. Yeah, he looked like a freshman. I'll be honest. He looked like a freshman. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and here's the thing. A lot of those runs were against loaded boxes, man. I went back and started to look at it. And, and they still ran the football somewhat effectively at times. I mean – yeah, I wasn't so disappointed in the run game because of the fact that that defense was sort of loading up for it. Um, 
you know, it does worry me a little bit going forward, okay? Uh, is that just an issue with this team? Is that going to be something going forward? You know, once the box loosens, loosens up a little bit, can they can they get the running game going, you know, at that time? Um, so definitely, you know, leaves you with some concern offensively, but at the same time, I'm with you. I don't I'm – not, I'm not overly concerned about it just because I think that they were running into a very loaded box and the New Mexico – priority was to stop that run and i'll be honest about the offensive line i'm excited this year the way they're playing but next year i think it's even gonna get better i mean just the way they're growing if i mean if you told me last year uh that was awful just why it hurt and now i know basantis is a freshman he's getting playing time maybe starting zooms or what a sophomore uh whatever getting to uh the berries a sophomore uh I mean, I was worried there for a while, but Foster, I mean, we should have some talent coming back next year. I don't want to talk about too much about next year, but it looks pretty good. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they, and those guys, look, they, they they were able to pick up the stunts and the different things, you know, the different looks that New Mexico brought, which were a lot of different stunts and twists and things like that. So they they that's something that they didn't do last year. That's already an improvement. We'll see what happens when they're doing that against top-level talent, you know, and, and in the SEC. But but I think overall, the fact that mentally they, they've been able to transition into that, that's step number one. And then you look at the guys that came out with the second group. And I'm not even going to count Dewberry, who's basically a, a 1A, right, or a 1B. But Fathery, Moko, Strickland, Aki, and Crownover were your second group. That's almost a, a, an offensive line that you'd say, well, it's not terrible, right? It's not too bad. Uh, well, you know, that you group, Aki, Did you throw Aki in there? He, he, was, he was pretty bad, by the way. He was bad last year. Yeah, he's still bad. It was one play he was pass blocking. It's a run play. He basically tackled the running back, whatever. Uh, that guy's got all the talent in the world. I mean, you know, if he could just get his head on straight. Ugh. So, yeah, I mean, but the, I guess my point is with that group as your second group, you, you you don't feel terrible, man. You feel all right about that. It's like, all right, we can still play. Yeah. That's been a, that's, that's the biggest turnaround here. Um, that, obviously, and like I said, the play con, but it was a great a great day for Aggie football to at least build some hope, even if it was New Mexico, but a little hope for the fans out there, right? Right. All right, let's move over to the defense. Look, uh, only two sacks by this defense. One of the things we've been talking about is can they get pressure? Only two sacks, but they did have 10 tackles for loss. So uh, let's start off just your MVP there, Corey. Man, I mean – what, from what I remember the game, watching him play, DeBerry impressed the hell out of me. That cornerback, I was uh, I was a little bit more disappointed in Chappelle than I thought I'd be. He he, uh, I don't know if he slipped a couple times or he just he didn't seem as involved as I thought he would be. But overall, I'd say that new guy from Boston College. I didn't think I'd be talking about him today, but he's the guy that impressed me the most. That he stood out to me, and him and Anderson. Uh, York, I thought, played well for a freshman. And Cooper, I thought Cooper looked good. I saw Cooper in a lot of plays. Yeah, uh, I agree with all those guys. I agree with all of them. Um, I still go to Jackson. <laughs> I go to McKinley Jackson. And look, man, they were rotating the defensive line like crazy, right? I mean, right. it was – I mean, new guys in there every couple plays, whatever. But you go watch the, that group when McKinley's in there, he is always disrupting. And I did go back and watch him just to let you know. Sure. Like he's always in, in the backfield. He's always, you know, causing the play. His numbers didn't show up. But I'm telling you that all those tackles that, that Nolan had, you know, a lot of them were because of disruption that McKinley caused or, you know, that Cooper had. A lot of Cooper's tackles that McKinley would cause disruption. Cooper gets the best. I mean, the dude was always involved in the play. He was able to get pressure in the passing game. I just, I love the way he, when when he's in there, that that defense is different. And to be more, even more precise, when him and Nolan are in there, they're just better. What about uh, Shamar Turner? Yeah, I thought Shamar Turner played okay, but he did stand out to me. I went back and watched, like I said again, and. And, you know, he was – he played a lot inside and out. And, 
inside. He was getting double teamed a bunch. So that, you know, that sort of takes away some of that, but yeah, he, he wasn't, he wasn't making the sort of the impact plays that I thought he would. And that's what surprises me is that he played inside as much as he did. I thought we'd see more Jackson, Nolan, uh, from a Dindy, uh, those bigger guys in the middle, Turner on the outside. Thanks. Exactly. I thought, yeah, I, he, you know, and and he did. He started inside, and then they've moved him outside at times. But you're right. I mean, he he just he got a bunch of reps in there, and uh, he he just didn't make a huge impact. I mean, you could tell when Nolan was in there, when when uh, Jackson was in there. I mean, it was just more. There, there was just more disruption. It just wasn't gonna, you know. <laughs> It was harder for that offense. I'll tell you, Shamar Stewart, he looked quick. He looked nimble. He looked uh, – he got in the backfield, got called for a face mask at one time. But yeah, so I thought I was surprise impressed. Players, surprise players. And maybe maybe he falls into that that category? Well, I guess he could. I mean, uh, like I told you, I was surprised DeBerry was as good as he was. Yeah. Um, he's active. He's everywhere. I like that about him. I mean, I don't know if people were scared to pick on Chappelle and they were trying to pick on DeBerry, but – I thought he played well. Uh, Stewart, surprised by his quickness. I mean, that guy was in the backfield from that. I watched the play over and over, and if he wouldn't have got the damn face mask or whatever he got when he had tackled the guy, it would have been a hell of a play. But he um, he played well. Yeah, you know what? I think I agree with that. I think I think Stewart was was kind of surprised. And and I'll say this. he hadn't. I didn't think he would have been practicing all that great, but, I'll, you know, you see him on that field. On Saturday, yep. and he's a different kind of player. He's a different kind of athlete at, at that position. Um, I was impressed. Dude, watching our defense play, even our offense, I see a lot of future NFL players, to be honest with you. As of right, I mean, that's what I noticed. Did you watch some teams, and we'll get into more games later, but you watch LSU and Florida State last night and other teams, and you're like, they got a bunch of future players. a and right there with them. Oh, agreed. 100% agreed. <laughs> How about the freshmen for this defense that impressed you the most? I only remember really one playing. I mean, uh, York is the only one I remember. And he, I thought he did great as a freshman. He looks big. He looks solid. The guy looks wide. Yeah. I mean, I, I looked at him. I was like, they put another defensive lineman at linebacker when I first saw him because I didn't know what number he was. They said 21. I was like, God damn it. He's putting a freaking line, a lineman at linebacker again. But it was York. And, he, I was impressed. I think he helps Cooper out a lot. Agreed, agreed. Because it sounds like he's the one making the calls. You know, he's he he played a ton of snaps. Um, and we'll get into the linebacker specifically, but I agree. He's the he's the freshman. I, I just to mention the guy Thomas. Thomas played a ton in the at at the outside corner. When anytime they go to the three corner, three corner back look into more of a dime look, he was the, he was the next corner on the field, and I thought he played excellent. By the way. Um, oh, my surprise of the game is that Durkin didn't fuck it up and start going with three man lines. That's my surprise of the game. There you go. I like that surprise. There it is. That's that's actually pretty good. So let's start there yep. with the defensive line. Yep. What are your takes on the D line, man? It's talent, talent, and more talent. I mean, I don't know. They, like you said, they rotate in so many players. You know, I mean, they'll. I'm sure they'll cut that back next week a little bit because. They got to get some kind of rhythm going, you know. You got to get go with a hot hand sometimes, but I expect to see more Jackson, Nolan, uh, Diggs, and Turner, you know, in that front four next week. But um, very impressive. The, the D line. I mean, so much talented is, group. The depth and talent. Yeah, and wide receivers. Let me let me let me name these guys because I I don't I don't want to leave any of them out. I got them all here listed. I think all of them. <laughs> Diggs. Yeah. Jackson, Nolan, Stewart, Turner, Rakes, Regis, Silla, Overton, White, big number 88, uh, late in the game, the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian, uh, Brunlo Dindy. I mean, and then, you know, so you get these guys and I just named like 12 of them. I mean, it's, it's easy to be impressed with the different things that they're bringing and, Look, they're using them in different situations, right? When they're, they're, when it's a pass situation, they're bringing in, you know, the faster guys. They they brought Silla in and 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 White in on some of those occasions, you know. So they're they're making sure that the personnel matches the need for the situation as well. I mean, it just an impressive, impressive depth 
But as I said earlier, there's a few guys to me that stood out. <laughs> and we've talked about all the different things with how much depth there is in, in the level of player. But the fact of the matter is, from what I could tell, I already said it with Nolan Jackson on the inside. Those two guys were difference makers. And then I thought Diggs and Stewart on the outside were the two guys that stood out. To me, if just based off of Saturday, those are your starting four right now. Go again. Who? Jackson, Nolan, Diggs, and Stewart. Really? You're not starting Turner? I think Stewart looked better. Okay. But, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah, gonna all get- it's not about it's not about who starts on this defense anyway because no. no. they're going to get playing time, and th- and I like that by the way. There, yeah. you know what, and and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. I, they did have you know like one or two three man lines in the entire game, maybe one. They had a couple of occasions where they had five defensive linemen in the game, and that alone to me, just right there, it's like. Just music to my ears, man. I couldn't be I, – I, when I saw that the other day, I was just like, ah, smiling, like big smile on my face. It's like, yes. <laughs> you know? I hear you. Uh, yeah, on, on the outside, you know, we talked about Diggs, Stewart. I thought 18 Overton played a pretty good game too, just so – just not to leave him out of the conversation, but – um. Yeah, I thought he I thought he played a pretty good game. Well, uh, that's what I was saying. Did Dendy like Dendy? He didn't put up any stats. I don't think did he? No, he 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 didn't play much. But he got he got some reps late. What about Hicks, the freshman? Did he play? Very little in the fourth quarter. Okay, yeah, I don't remember seeing him. Must have yeah. been the drinks. They look and let's move on to the linebackers because that defensive line covered up for these linebackers a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And when you watch the film, you see it even more. Um. I, look, at times it was York and Cooper. That's who that's 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 who started. You know, at times it was York and Russell. After sort of a back and forth in the first quarter, you started seeing more just York and Cooper, right? And those, right. those two guys, I think, are just the two better the two better linebackers. You're right. York looks like a like a guy that's been on campus for for a couple of years already, he's swole. Right. Yeah, I like him. And and when he makes a decision, he goes. And that's one thing you do like about him. Like it is, you know, he sees it and goes and and sticks with it. You know, the linebacker crew still even even that like we had the one big long run right, the touchdown in the in the first quarter, right? And you know, you, you get that situation and you go look at those linebackers and the linebackers are split. One's going one way, the other one's going the other. Now, were they the cause for the touchdown? Somewhat. I mean, that, that doesn't help. But then on, on top of it, underneath, you get you get Fidel Diggs who who gives away his his gap. Uh, and so you end up having two two guys outside that creates the scene. But but it also comes back to those, like I said, those linebackers splitting, right? When we coach linebackers, we always talked about we wanted those guys in unison. Those, you know, they're sort of chained to each other to a certain extent, right? right. But, you know, as the game went along, you started seeing more plays from Cooper, kind of like you said, right? And tackles for loss, I thought I thought Cooper did did pretty well in that area. I think he had three three tackles for loss. So you know you start seeing some of those numbers, man. I, they were more decisive with especially with Cooper and York in there. They were more decisive. They were more downhill. I like that. Well, I mean, I think it's obvious Cooper's the most talented one of the bunch right now. I mean, he's fast, slick. I mean, I think York's going to catch up with him, but just the guy super special right now. And he, I think we, like we said before, we thought he has been, but he didn't play up to his level. I think it was coaching. Hopefully, it's gotten better. Hey, Smirkin Durkin's the new linebackers coach. Maybe it's making a difference. Maybe. Um, everybody else that played linebacker, you know, Davis came in to transfer from uh, Jacksonville State or whatever, and. Uh, you know, he's he's a bit undersized, right? He's just not – he's not as physical as the other two guys. Uh, 
Russell, once again, same thing. You know, he's he's not as physical, those kind of things. But overall, you know, I mean, you, at least you get some depth with those guys, right? What what happened with Harris? I don't. I thought he bit more pressure being the backfield more. I didn't see a whole lot of that guy. He got a personal foul penalty early on, and I don't know that he's. And then they blamed him for another one where they where it really wasn't him. It was uh, it was somebody else. I can't remember, but um, but uh, I'm not sure that he got on the field too much after that. Gotcha. Right. So let's go from let's go from the linebackers to the safety position. And and Corey, we talked about this earlier. You know, like there were times when it was when it when they when New Mexico was coming out to run the football, and you saw the way Richardson and Anderson were playing. And they're basically their two other linebackers, right? So you they were lining up with with those two guys along with York and Cooper, and you basically had a four tight end look. I mean, four linebacker look in the in the box right there. Um, and we said it before, like it, it, it's not a stretch to say that Richardson could play, be kind of a hybrid linebacker. I mean, especially at his size and, and and all that. So, you know, I thought it, I thought those two guys played pretty well. Uh, I thought they played well. I'd, I'd rather see, be honest with you, I'd rather see more Anderson and Gilbert on the field, maybe less Richardson. Richardson seems to play out of place. He gets lucky to me, which you know paid off last year his luck, but. I don't want him. Yeah. I don't need him being lucky. And that's a good point. You also saw a lot of Gilbert on the field. I thought Gilbert played excellent. Anderson played excellent. You know, Richardson. Yeah. I thought, like I said, in the box, I think he's good at, but he gets lost in coverage. And he had a couple of mistakes. There was one uh, on a third down and long play that I think like third and nineteen, and Gilbert ends up making a hit on the receiver, causing the incompletion. But he was open because of the fact that Damani kept just drifting and drifting back, right? He, he didn't stick in his sort of in his zone. And after the play, you can see Anderson saying, Hey, look, I got deep. What's going on? You know? Yeah. Um, so he does get lost in coverage at times. They, <clears throat> one of the other things that I, that I, that I thought was pretty good was on passing downs. They'd move, they would move Anderson out to the deep safety, bring Richardson down into the slot and then also move Chappelle into the slot and then bring in Javon Thomas instead of one of the linebackers. Right. And so, you know, they go to that dime look with a little bit more coverage and, and getting, getting Richardson and, and Chappelle into the slot, I think helps because the two guys that are best deep are Anderson and Gilbert, which did a pretty good job. Um, all, all in all, you know, you saw a lot of Kerr, you saw some of Matthews, um, and later in the game, some of the some of the young guys um, came came in, but but I thought I thought the safety group played pretty well. Yeah, I wasn't. I think as as long as our defensive line does good, our safeties and our backfield, our defensive backs are going to look good. That's my opinion. So let's let's on that comment. Let's move to the corners because I think this is where I had a little bit of an issue. All um, right. And you know what? It's the guy that I've been praising all offseason. I thought Chappelle was not great on Saturday. There was, That's my opinion, too. There was a few times it seemed like he was just giving up too much too much cushion, you know? It doesn't seem like he was trying as hard as he did last year. I don't know what it was, if he just wasn't psyched up for New Mexico. But, yeah, he looked like he was just lackadaisical. A lot of the breakups this, this defense had were either DeBerry – getting in there or Javon Thomas getting in there. I mean, those two guys I thought played as, as good as any of the other corners um, and were probably as more, the most impressive. They're very, as you said, you know, maybe maybe one of the most impressive players on this defense altogether uh, on Saturday. Where was Grimes? Nowhere to be found. Was he, was he a scratch? Did he play? He didn't play. Hmm. Later in the game – uh, Harmon got some game, some some reps. Rogers got some reps outside as well. Uh, so you know, a couple of other guys got into the mix as the day game on, uh, the game went on. But you know, the Chappelle and DeBerry didn't come off the field basically, uh, and Jen, Javon Thomas was the guy that that came in uh, the next when they brought in the dime. So, huh? Okay, a little surprising. Uh, overall grade, man, as we wrap it up here on the Aggies, what's what's your thoughts, Corey? Overall grade for the game, yeah. uh, it's got to be an A+. Plus. I mean, that's a great start. Uh, I'm not real disappointed in any aspect of the game. I mean, the running game probably could have been a little bit better. Our 
Secondary a little bit better. We probably could have got. I mean, I'd like to see more turnovers caused. What we have one turnover. One turnover to Barry with an interception. Great, <laughs> great showing up. Had an interception. But, I think he had a sack. Yeah, he had. He had. I think he played a great game. Uh, but we played New Mexico. I don't want to get you know go out there and get everybody all excited. We played New Mexico. We beat them. We did what we were supposed to do. That's why I was going to go B plus, B plus because it was against New Mexico. That's about. I mean, what do, what do you have to do? Beat them eighty to nothing, eighty to seven to. Do what Oregon did, yeah, eighty-eight to three or something. Uh, and we don't do that. That's just something we we never ran the score up. We could have. I mean, this team we played. Well, I, I say I say B plus because of the few things that you mentioned, right? The running game didn't really show out. I thought that you know that that still has right. to show something more. I thought that the secondary needs to show something more. So I I didn't think it was perfect. Obviously, we had a kick a kick blocked, you know. As well, <laughs> so I'd go B plus. Gotcha. Are we uh, are we going to talk about next week's game today, or we're we going to do another pod later this week? We'll do another pod later this week. Let's go. Let's let's hit a quick okay. around college, around college football here. Uh, do it. Florida and Utah. Florida is maybe worse than I thought. What do you think? Yeah, Florida looked. That quarterback's not the answer. That guy from Wisconsin, he's not the yeah. answer. Their overall talent levels down from Florida. Their and coach. Utah, not, their coach is not the answer. He's likely going to be no. on the hot seat. And that Utah team, I mean. They're not bad, but they didn't have to start in quarterback, and you could tell. I mean, it was uh, – Hey, look, it looks like pretty... Nebraska – Nebraska's going to take another year to get there. Their, their offense couldn't get anything done. Uh, hey. What are your thoughts? I think Nebraska's better than – they They look better to me than what they had, but they lost another close game. Another close game. They had to leave 10-3 to in the fourth quarter, lost it 13-10. to now they're gonna have a hard time next week. Nebraska, they're playing a good team. I can't remember who it was, but they're playing somebody. I'm gonna be like, oh shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of high expectations for Nebraska after seeing what I see. And I do think they're better. I just don't think that they're there yet. Uh, yeah. Not, not overly impressed by Mizzou, specifically on the on the offensive side. Any thoughts on Mizzou? No, I didn't watch him. Yeah. Uh, Friday's games, Georgia Tech and all the former Aggies. What'd you think? Hey, Haynes King had good stat line. Still didn't throw the ball like I want him to. He still has a little bit of a, you know, the cock to it. But he had like three or four touchdowns. I mean, he had a good game. They lost, but he had a good game. Chase Lane had a big touchdown catch, forty-five yards. Yeah, hey, wishing the best. They're you know they've got yeah. a, they've got a lot a long way to go. Uh, Miami better than probably better than we thought they were going into the season. No, uh, their athletes I thought was were a little bit better than what I expected. Um, to the, next week's game is going to be a challenge. Yeah, they're uh, – I still wasn't overly impressed with Van Dyke, the quarterback, but we'll talk more about that later. But, yeah, Miami, yeah. they look – they're a lot better than New Mexico. I'll give them that much. Uh, Saturday, new quarterbacks for Georgia and Ohio State. Uh, not really impressed with either one of them. Thoughts? More impressed with Georgia than I was Ohio State. Ohio State, very disappointed, very disappointed. With that receiving group he has in Ohio State, it looks – Yeah, uh, yeah, I think definitely Ohio State worse, worse showing than Georgia, but uh... – you know, and you're playing a mind. bad Indiana team, a bad Indiana team. Yeah, that's a good point. Michigan, uh, not as impressive on offense either, but uh, showed running the ball a little bit. But JJ McCarthy looked all right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about Michigan. I think they're going to. Hey, Bama, Bama, Milrow, the next Heisman quarterback for the bat for for Bama. Five touchdowns, baby. Five touchdowns. Yeah, I don't see it. USC pretty damn explosive in their second game of the season. Penn, Penn yeah, State they're going to be good. explosive all year. Penn State looked good. Washington looked really good. That Washington team playing Boise little, State. A little, little, little bit of a slow start, but boy, once they got going, buddy. Uh, yeah. Texas, not all, that, you, not all that impressive, right, Texas? No. But yeah, I'll tell you, UCF looked good. UCF, we watched them the other night, too. They looked good. They're Faster than I thought they'd be. Gus Mel's on. Plumley. They're going to get the Plumley. Big 12. Miles Plumley at quarterback, making plays. Yeah. Uh, Notre Dame's going to challenge Ohio State and USC in those games. They may win them both, actually. Notre Dame? Yeah. Yeah. Notre Dame's good. They're one of the best teams I watched play this year. I mentioned earlier, Oregon scores 88. Boy, those boys can score. Yeah. And who do they play next week? Texas Tech, who did what? Lost. Lost to Wyoming, which yes. I told you. I told you. I was like, hey. You did. Watch out for I said, I no, wait, you're not going to like this pick. And you, you said, what? 
It's like, I, I don't like Texas Tech. You, you're about to say, oh, I love Texas Tech. I, I did pretty much say that. Uh, Kansas oh. State, I think, is going to be competing for the Big 12 championship, buddy. What do you think? I think you're wrong. I think UCF is going to be up there. After I watched them and what Texas Tech did against Wyoming, a little disappointed. Let me just tell you, UCF was playing Oklahoma Kansas State, by the way. Oklahoma, I think, might have a say in that, too. Yeah, I think Oklahoma is definitely going to have a say in it. Uh, yep. What was it? 73 to nothing oh, this weekend, Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, Colorado's big win. Colorado's big win. What's Everybody's talking about it. What's your thoughts, Corey? That was probably the second best game of the weekend, second or third. Uh, I put it up there. Florida State and uh, LSU last night was – that was a hell of a game. I enjoyed the that, hell out of that. That, that was a hell of a game. Uh, that was. I'll say this crazy. about Colorado. I think. I think. I think those guys are going to put up numbers all year long offensively. Um, that defense is not going to hold up against uh, a lot of the offenses in the face. Uh, I'll tell you. Take that. the over. Take the over. Take the over. That is correct. Hey, I'll uh, tell you one thing. Dion has done the talent level there has increased. He's done a good job bringing in talent. Number twelve, by the way, that dude is a baller. I mean, he he had, he he had 100 something yards receiving, and then he was on the other side. He had an interception as a defensive back. He played 130 snaps, 130 snaps or something like that. Uh, unbelievable, dude can play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, South Carolina overrated. No, nah, I mean they're about like they're where they are. They, they he Beamer just needs to bring in more talent. He's got some good players yeah. on the f- first line. After that, it's he doesn't have depth. Well, and his quarterback's definitely overrated. Mac Brown says he he was building the perfect offense. Apparently, it didn't materialize in week one, so it's not quite ready. <laughs> Scored 31 points. Yeah, I don't think that's the perfect offense. Eh. Ole Miss scored a little bit, though. And that's what he does at Ole Miss. I, I'm not – he plays those cupcakes. He beats the crap out of them. Then he loses to, I don't know, somebody he shouldn't. Uh, Tulane could be the best non 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 power five conference uh, pl- uh team out there. Tulane, yeah, I can and see that. They're pretty good. Uh, Kentucky was good, <laughs> not great. Yep. No, uh, Kentucky. I, I didn't see him play though. I wanted to watch that game too. I wanted to see the quarterback, but he did. Purdue, Boston College, both suck. Yes. Arkansas looked good. Yep. Washington State came out and showed some shit. Sure did. Baylor loses to Texas State. Embarrassment of the of the weekend for Texas football. Yeah, right by far. Uh, Texas State did not. That was a twenty seven and a half point spread or something like that. I think some people tease it down to twenty one and a half, and they they lost. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it wasn't a fluke. Texas State moved the ball. It wasn't like Baylor wasn't doing anything. Baylor was moving the ball, but Texas State was moving the ball better. Yeah. And that guy that co- coaches from um, Incarnate Ward, where they scored over 50 points a game last year, and they good were talking year. about him. Good year last year. So, yeah. UTSA so they're going to surprise people. UTSA loses to Houston. Uh, and Texas, yeah. I was surprised. I like UTSA a lot in that game. So, a lot going on. All right. Questions from the tailgate brought to you by David Coffin, PLLC. First one uh, What team from around the country impressed you the most? Florida State. Florida State, man, watching them last night, that whole game, the first half I was texting you saying, you know, LSU, man, they they got stopped on fourth and one twice when they're going in. I'm talking it could have been 14-point swing, huge. But the second half, that Florida State team, he's got big-time receivers like we do at a and But that quarterback, he is quick, makes good decisions. Uh, their defense is suspect. Their running game is a little suspect, but – that quarterback and those receivers that got six seven, he Johnny Wilson, Johnny was Wilson, good. and that and that guy from Michigan State, that, those kids, that guy had like three touchdown catches last night. Too. But LSU, yeah, he's good. And LSU, I was impressed with uh, Daniel's legs. That guy, he can move. He makes the good runs. They're His better arms, than what the court. They're better than what the score says they are, right? Oh yeah, that score should have been a lot closer, but. Uh, Florida State, by far, I think they're going to win the ACC. I think Washington's going to win the Pac-12, but I think Oregon State impressed me. Oregon State impressed me, too. Ugulele or whatever, that's a yeah. hell of an offensive line there. They beat San Jose State, the same team USC beat, and they look like they beat them more handily. That Oregon State team's going to be tough. I don't think USC's going to win the Pac-12 this year. 
like everybody else does. The Big well, Ten. Been, I think I've been saying that for a while now, Corey. That the U that the Pac-12 is loaded, and and it's going to be a tough a tough run through there. Big Ten after one of first week. It, I, I like Penn State, they, uh, but I, of course Michigan's going to be up there. I'm not. I don't think Ohio State's going to win the Big Ten. Uh, Big Twelve, Texas. I don't know who the second team. Maybe Oklahoma. I Oklahoma, Kansas State is where I'm going to go with in the Big Twelve. You know. Okay, uh, I didn't see Oklahoma, Kansas State, but I know they lost Deuce Vaughn. He was like their heart and heart and soul last year. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I thought the most impressive team was Florida State. I think by far, I you know, they, just the the level of talent offensively, but not only that, defensively, the the the, the defensive end that came back. You know, he was constantly causing some Burst. pressure. Yeah, getting some pressure yeah. on on the quarterback, and that's we know that's a big part of of creating havoc and and, and messing up offense, right? And you know, right. when you looked at LSU on a couple of those fourth downs, I think two of them were sacks. You know that 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 they didn't get. So um, you know that that's a big thing, right? To have a front that can get some pressure and do some things, you know, is important. And and then you know they caused it caused them to throw you know throw that throw an interception as well. You know, uh, so that havoc creates creates problems for a defense. Um, I was most impressed with Florida State. I think I think those guys those guys really, I mean, just manhandled right. LSU in the second half, right? Right. Uh, where do you think we need the most improvement going into next week? I mean, this is nitpicking, but I'd say the running game, and I think we're going to get the the tight ends involved in the offense because. They're going to see. I mean, if they're watching the tape we watched, they're uh, they're going to figure something out against those receivers. Yeah, I do. I do think that uh, eventually you're going to have to show that you can run the football. Um, and I do believe that that's probably the area offensively where we're going to have to show the most improvement is is sort of running the football. Um, defensively, we're going to have to do a lot better job in the secondary, especially some of the zone stuff that they were, that they were doing and making sure that, that they're taking care of their business. We talked about Damani Richardson, you know, but they, he wasn't the only one that, that had, had issues there. So, um, you know, we'll see what the coverage looks like, uh, but they're going to have to show some improvement there. Um, and, and especially, and right off the bat, because Miami, Miami is better. We will do another podcast later this week on Miami okay. and that matchup coming up. All what right, do you Corey. think of Thursday? You want to do it Thursday or Wednesday or what? Because we got to talk some bets too. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, how, how do we do it. betting this week? Hey, how how'd you do betting this week, Corey? How'd you do, man? I didn't do as good as you did. You're on I, fire. I was on a little bit of a little <laughs> bit of heater. You were on a heater. Can't can't so, go wrong with a little heater. No, nah, you can't. I mean, you hit four one hundred dollar bets right there. Boom, 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 boom. Do you remember uh, which each game was? Do you remember each bet? I know Tennessee, Washington State. There's other two I can't remember right now. No, I don't remember. But the Tennessee, I think, was the over, wasn't it? No, nah, you took them minus 27 and a half. Oh, there you go. Well, Giga Maggie's, AP, C Money, the delivery man. See y'all later. <laughs>